The other is, or the other question, who designed the designer? Excellent question, actually, because we are, we are looking at logic, right? Who designed the designer then? Logical, good question. But remember, logic must be placed on some pieces of information. You need two things if you want to make a conclusion that's a good logical conclusion. You need some pieces of information on which you use logic. If the pieces of information is faulty, then no matter how good the logic, your conclusion will not stand. If your pieces of information is good but you use faulty logic, you will still end up with a wrong conclusion. In this case, to ask who designed the designer, we must go to the pieces of information, not the logic, because the logic is good. Who designed the designer? Because we told ourselves that when you see something that is that has a design, you must look for the designer. So who designed God? The fault is not in the logic, the fault is in the claims that are being made. And when you have a claim, you must not change the claims. You must shoot it down by a good argument, but not change the claims. The claim of God is that he is not, he, she, it is not created. Timeless, beginningless, without end, without beginning. That is the claim. Now you've got to shoot the claim down, but not change the claim. So the claim is that this creator was not created. That's the claim. So if you say, no, the creator was created, okay, then let's put it on one column and put the other one on the other column and have your arguments for and against either of those. Is that fair enough? Yeah. If you say that the creator, this designer was designed, then show me some evidence for that. Because you're making a claim. I'll leave that with you. Because it's a good way of doing a pan process. Go ahead. And that's your search. And that is the way you look at it. But I would suggest, do not change the claim. That will not be fair, because if you do that, then you can win all the arguments on Earth. You can just change the argument there and then shoot it down from here. That is not being reasonable. Don't change the claim. You have arguments for and against the claim, but don't change it. Those, that's my response. It's not an answer, it's a response. Here we go. Formation of granite. Now, if the background to this is the idea that if there is no God in existence, then the processes that formed what we now know as the Earth took millions and hundreds of millions of years. If there was a God, then there is a possibility that the God could do what is known as creation and snap his finger and it will happen, boom, just right there. The formation of granite. We know how sedimentary rocks are formed, layer upon layer of sand, and then over a period of time they get compressed and form rock. We know how igneous rock is formed. It's lava that becomes rock later on. We do not know how granite is formed. There's only a theory. And in that theory, the material which was gaseous in stage coalesced or got together and under a certain pressure and temperature became granite. But that is a theory. Granite has never ever been formed by those pressures and temperatures and material. Never. But here's what we have so far. There is something known as polonium halos. Now what's polonium? Polonium-218 is a radioisotope. What's a radioisotope? A material that gives off radiation. And any material that gives off radiation decays or becomes smaller in quantity itself. It'll give off the radiation and then become smaller. So when you look at the mass of some radioactive substance, we talk about half-lives. In other words, how much time does it take to become half its size? Uranium-238 has a half-life of 4.53 billion years. 
So if there's a very little piece of uranium here, it'll take 4.53 billion years for that material to become half its size. Polonium-218 is what is known as a primordial radioisotope. In other words, there is no material from which it came. Most of the others, when it decays or becomes or gives off its radiation, becomes something else, like uranium, then becomes radon, radium, and then finally it goes on to lead. Lead stops because it's not a radioacti radioactive isotope. Polonium-218 is a radioisotope that is primordial. It doesn't have a previous precursor or something that it came from. Polonium-218 has a half-life of three minutes. So it stays for three minutes and half-life and becomes half. If you pull it to its full life, it's about five hours. People talk about half-lives as the life. So we'll leave it at three minutes, but you can use five hours too has a half-life of five hours. Now, suppose there's a bubble that is caught in a block of ice. The bubble lasts for only five hours. How long do you think then that we should say it took for the ice to form? At least five hours, not more than that. If it took more than that, the bubble is gone. Are you with me? I'll say that again. If a bubble is going to last for only five hours and then it's gone, and we do find a bubble in a block of ice, then we can reasonably deduce that that ice caught the bubble in a period of five hours. Because if it took longer than that, the bubble is gone. Polonium-218 has a half-life of three minutes to five hours, a full life of five hours. When it decays, it gives off radiation. And when it's in a substance, the radiation causes a, what is known as a signature halo. It forms a halo around in the substance itself as it gives off the radiation. So if a material has caught a halo, then the material was formed between three minutes and five hours. Is that reasonable? Yes, that's what the, uh, the, uh, the reasoning is. Polonium halos, an exceedingly large number of polonium halos are embedded in granites around the world. Including in Yosemite where I've gone to those huge gigantic granite rocks. Every granite rock that they have tested around the world has polonium halos embedded in huge quantities. It's an astounding conclusion. Granite was formed not in hundreds of millions of years, but within three minutes to five hours. Yeah, you've got to say, wow. I, I met the author who really did this research himself uh, a few months ago in Maryland, USA. And I went up to him and I said, has anybody refuted what you have uh, published as scientific, in scientific journals? And this is what he said. We have repeatedly challenged the academy to publicly explain where the polonium halo evidence for creation has ever been scientifically invalidated. For over 15 years they have refused to even try. It's, um, it's a, sh quite an amazing piece of information from the scientific world. And it's been there for 15 years now. And I asked him, has anyone refuted? He said, not to this day. Till that time, I think scientifically, if you're a scientist, and if I'm a scientist, searching for knowledge, an inquirer is a scientist, then we have to agree, or at least give some credence to it and say, it is possible that granite, and granite is supposed to be the framework of planet Earth. The frame of planet Earth was formed within three minutes to five hours. Statistical analysis. Chance is a subjective concept, but it is also a mathematical formula. It is called probability. What are the chances that this will happen? Okay, you put all the factors in into the formula, 
and then the formula churns out a number and it's one to so and so. In day to day life, 10 to the power of 8, which is 100 million, if something is going to occur 100 million times, and it probably will not occur only once, then in day to day life we say it's a fact. It will, if it occurs only once, and will not occur 10 to the power of 8 times, that is 100 million times, then we say it's not possible. This is day to day life. When it comes to scientific evaluation, the number goes up to 10 to the power of 15 or 1 quadrillion. If you want to build a drawbridge or shoot a rocket into, this, into space carrying people where, or run a, make a roller coaster, then the principles that you use for building those things have to go to a point of 10 to the power of 15. In other words, the principle must sustain itself 10 to the power of 15 times and chances and be probably not there one chance and only then they will use that principle because life is at stake. So 10 to the power of 15 is the point at which they say this is a good scientific plan or a good scientific concept. When it comes to scientific law, the number goes up to 10 to the power of 50. 10, 1, followed by 50 zeros. So if something is going to occur 10 to the power of 50 times and will not occur only one time, then we say it is a law, scientific law. And if it occurs only once, only one chance, and it will not occur 10 to the power of 50 times, we say it is utterly impossible. It's a scientific law that it will not occur. S Michael Denton was one of the first, arguably, one of the first to challenge Charles Darwin's theory based on statistical chance. What he did was looked at the first cell that probably occurred and came together and asked what are the chances that some components of the cell came together to the same place by themselves because that's the claim it's spontaneous generation they call it by themselves the material came together now we want the cell to live so we look at what is the minimum number of proteins that are require a cell to live and that is 100 what are the chances that they came together before that this number 1 10 to the power of 50 actually flies over our heads. So let me give you one idea of where we are with that number. Suppose I want to test gravity with my pointer. Once a second I am dropping this hoping that I'll get to that one chance when this when the pointer will not fall down like that because of gravity but will stay right there or float away. I'm looking for that chance. So once per second, I'm testing gravity. If we test it 10 to the power of 18 times, not 10 to the power of 50, 10 to the power of 18 times, it'll take me 15 billion years. To test it 10 to the power of 20 times, it will take me 1.5 trillion years. What is the significance of the first one, 10 to the power of 18 seconds, 15 billion years? That is the age of the universe, from the Big Bang. The entire age of the universe is only 10 to the power of 18 seconds, 10 to the power of 18 times. I still got to go to 10 to the power of 50. 10 to the power of 20 is 100 times the age of the universe. 